Let's talk a little Astros. A few days ago, the worst kept secret in all sports was confirmed. Justin Verlander will need Tommy John surgery and will be out for the season. So this definitely puts a lot of question marks on the Astros playoff rotation. So let's let's talk about that. Your article on sportsmap.com uh, really highlighted some of the struggles that one of the starters or proposed starters, Lance McCullers, has had uh, away from home. You put the home road splits out there and they were pretty profound. Uh, two part question for you. One is how much do you weigh Lance's playoff experience against those, uh, road concerns? And then two, how much does the entire team's road struggles weigh into that factor as well? It really is bizarre that McCullers, and it's not just a 2020, uh, funky season, small sample size for his career. Lance McCullers in basically an equal number of starts at home in ERA well below three, on the road, an ERA well above five. So basically at home, he's great. On the road, he stinks. So that's over a, about a five-year period, right? Not a trivial number of games. We're talking about 45 starts home and away. I don't see any logical explanation for it. I think Lance McCullers, the consensus is he's a ferocious competitor. Is he too amped up on the road in enemy territory? I don't know. It's not as if Minute Maid Park is this wonderful pitcher's park that subdues offensive numbers. Uh, I think if you're in a close to a tiebreaker situation, choosing to start, and while there'll be no crowds, there'll still be road settings, and there've been no crowds this year, and McCullough's been a disaster on the road over his first four anyway. If you're choosing among Urquidy, Valdez, Javier, and McCullers, I don't see why to give the benefit of the doubt to McCullers, but you raised why I think Dusty Baker, who loves to trust veterans if given the opportunity, likely gives McCullers the benefit of the doubt past postseason experience. But even there, the famous Game 7 in 2017, at home against the Yankees, American League Championship Series, McCullers locked it down over the last four innings. On the road as the starter, Game 7 of the World Series in L.A., Lance McCullers hit four guys, didn't make it out of the third inning. It's been absolutely Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I think that should factor into the considerations if you have guys who are worthy alternatives. But if I was going to guess right now, unless McCullers gets shelled in his final road start, uh, I'm going to guess that, that he goes in either game two or three. Speaking of some of those worthy alternatives, about three weeks ago, you and I spoke here on the channel about the return of Jose Arquiti. And you were pretty cautious in your optimism about what to expect from Jose, but uh, so far in a short sample size, he's pitched pretty well. Where do you see him fitting into this rotation? Yeah, and speaking of small sample size, that one World Series start where he tossed the five shutout innings against the Nationals, but it is one data point in the crucible of the postseason beyond certainly what you could put up for Framber Valdez or for Christian Javier. Um, maybe matchup specific. At this point, it looks as though the Astros are going to face Oakland, which is the worst hitting team of the Astros' possible first-round opponents at this point. Uh, Matt Chapman, one of their best hitters, wasn't having a terrific season, but a big right-handed bat is lost to a hip injury. Now, when you go look at Javier or Keedy, there's not going to be all that much data versus any of the Oakland hitters. Maybe they'll go line by line with McCullers, and if they think, okay, and do they look at home as opposed to road versus, versus the Oakland hitters, I, I think basically it boils down to a second guesser's delight. I don't think Dusty Baker has obvious right answers. We know Grinky's the game one starter. If he goes with Urquidy and he gets shellacked, it won't be fair to say, well, he blew it. He should have gone with Javier uh, or McCullers or Valdez, but two of those four, and this, of course, is if the series goes the maximum three games, if the Astros get through that, it actually helps them some that with no off days under the format this year, the best of five division series, unless you're going to pitch someone on short rest, and there's no reason for the Astros to do that, you're going to use five different starters. If that goes the distance, they do have five viable alternatives. But a best of three, well, you can only use three, but two of those guys go to fortify the Astros' otherwise extremely shaky bullpen. Let's talk about a guy you've mentioned a couple of times in here, and that's Christian Javier, who's another young, bright spot for the Astros. And the conventional thinking within baseball is you ease rookies into big moments. You don't put them in situations that might rattle their confidence going forward. 
How much do you subscribe to that? And how much do you think that will impact the Astros decision in where they put him in the rotation and the kind of leash that he has? Yeah, I, I don't buy into it at all. Uh, experience is the best teacher. If you put him in there and he fails and he wet his pants because he was so uptight, well, so be it. If you have obvious superior veteran hands you want to turn to, well, the Astros don't, right? Verlander's done. Uh, Charlie Morton checked out two seasons ago now. So you're choosing among young guys other than McCullers. Uh, Javier has been absolutely the toughest of the Astros starting pitchers for other guys to get hits off of. And that's a pretty good starting point in evaluating a starting pitcher. Javier, like certainly all the guys in the bullpen, he's walked too many. He has been somewhat vulnerable to the home run ball. Well, Oakland is one of the tougher home run parks in Major League Baseball. So will that swing it? Uh, a Javier vote from Dusty Baker, Brent Strom, whoever else factors into the decision. But they have four guys for two spots. I mean, really, they could draw straws for all I care and then just hope for the best. But I would lean against McCullers in either of those two spots unless he shows on the road this week. Uh, we've danced around the options, but I want to get who your five would be. Uh, but before we do that, I do want you to kind of talk on how much you think Brett Strom is going to have input into that decision making process with who those five will be. Yeah, you know, to me, if I am James Click, I'd say, Brent, even if it's a secret, secret meeting, you make the call. But if Dusty Baker is the manager and the manager makes so much more than the pitching coach, and this is one very specific decision that a manager gets to make that impacts uh, what you're taking the field with. Uh, so I don't know what the internal dynamics on that are, but Brent Strom works with those guys, obviously, integrally. Dusty Baker makes in-game decisions. So Strom's input to me would carry the day. Uh, not that you're going to announce Brent Strom will decide who our starting pitchers are in the playoffs, but functionally, Brent Strom's more qualified. Give me the five, your five for the rotation. Well, starting with the best of three, Granky, who while he's tailed off significantly over his last few starts, Granky's the game one guy on overall track record and even overall performance this season. Uh, I might go for a mix of styles. Uh, Katie can touch the mid-90s, but I think he'd, he'd be characterized as more a finesse guy. Uh, so Arkady would probably be one of my other two. And then uh, Framber Valdez to mix in the lefty. And do you want to go righty, lefty, righty? Is there extra pressure if you go to a game three? One game, winner takes all for that series. Do you think one guy is more suitable in terms of makeup? Well, Urquidy pitched on the World Series stage. So right now, subject to change, Granky one, Valdez two, Urquidy three. And again, you have Javier as a multi-innings available option in the bullpen. Same true for McCullers. <laughs> 